Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God on this day of the Lord, the, the day that the Lord has made, Saturday. Um, and I'm here to bring forth the word of God for you. And hopefully this message will bless you, will reach your heart, will cut your heart, and will cause you to seek the Lord with all your heart in these last days. So I'm here to magnify the Lord in this place and bring forth his word. And let me start out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, your name is blessed forever. You are the blessed one. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the Jehovah Jireh. You are the El Shaddai. Hallelujah. You are the great and mighty God. There was no one like you. There was no one that is equal to you. You have the matchless name of Jesus Christ. With all power and authority was given unto you in earth as in heaven. And thank you for giving us that same authority, God, that same power to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil. Fathers, we come to give you the glory in this place. I come to bring forth this word, Lord, to edify, to teach, to touch hearts, to change minds, to convict. Whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit, do it with this message. I preach this message by faith. Do what you will with this message, God. Let your will be done as this word goes forth and touch hearts and plant seeds that will bear much fruit, Father, in these last days. So put your words in my mouth, God, or over my mouth by faith that you will fill it with your word and it will go forth as a sharp double-edged sword. Father, help me, God. I can do nothing without you, but I can do all things through you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this message today is the keys for revival, the keys for revival. And I have been seeking the Lord on this and I was I will start this off with a story. Got a couple stories I'm going to share today if I have time. But the first story is uh, there's a church that is in Largo, Maryland. And there was a powerful minister there uh, named Eric Mears, uh, mighty man of God. I forgot the name of the church. I haven't been there in a while. Uh, but mighty man of God. I mean, God is just moving through him. He loves the word. He is all about the word of God. Um, he brings such honor and, and respect and love for the word. It's amazing. But he moves in power and the anointing of God uh, in amazing ways. I mean, I saw people falling down without even being near them. They were getting slain in the spirit and falling out. He wasn't even touching them. They were just falling out in their seats when he called them up. Moves in anointing, but also in sound doctrine. Uh, you need both. So very balanced, very balanced. Anointing of God and sound doctrine. But um, he, said, he said that he said that he would, he would never uh, speak a prophetic word unless he knows it's God. He would never speak unless he knows it's God. I'm the same way. I'm very hesitant on saying I hear God and speaking a prophetic word unless I know it's God. And when I step forth and do it by faith, it always blesses the person and edifies. So he, so he said that at the same day he was doing service. He said, he said, I never speak the word of God unless I know it's God. I'll speak the, a prophetic word unless I know it's God. So <clears throat> that same day, interestingly, you know, God was moving. The power of God was moving. So I was just sitting in my seat and I was just in the spirit, had my hands lifted. I was just in meditation before the Lord and uh, just taking in everything that was happening. And then he said, you with the carpet diem shirt. And I had a carpet diem shirt on. Uh, seize the day, right? We need to seize the day. Seize this hour for the Lord. Amen. And he said, you with the carpet diem shirt, come forth. And, and then I didn't really hear it at first, but uh, my sister in Christ that was with me, she tapped me and said, oh, he's calling you, calling you. And I'm surprised. Like, wow, you know, he just said earlier he doesn't really give much prophetic words very rarely unless he knows his God. So I said, okay, he said that, then he calls me. I think he only called two people that day. So um, I, I know uh, without a doubt it's God. So he brought me to the front and then uh, he laid hands on me. The power of God hit me. I hit the floor. And then he told me, he said, uh, you know, there's two things the Lord is saying to you. He said, said, number one, there is more. There is more. That was it. And he said, number two, pure revival. And he said, now you go seek God. And found out what it is. And God hasn't been giving me keys of pure revival and showing me what this means in his revelation for the body of Christ. And first, I'm really embodying this and getting a perspective of this and getting a revelation of this for myself and walking in it for myself. Because you got to walk in it yourself before you can 
teach it or preach it. Amen. So I've been seeking God. and He's been giving me keys for pure revival. And I feel like it's time that I share some. So this is the first part, the, the keys to revival. All right. And the main launch pad verse um, is in Second Chronicles 7, verse 14, which a lot of believers know. Um, and this was when Solomon dedicated the temple to the Lord. And the Lord spoke. Hallelujah. After he dedicated, he said a prayer, mighty prayer, dedicated temple. And, and, the, and the Lord responded in this way. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears intent to the prayer that is made in this place. Now, we know that God's word applies for yesterday, today and forever. And there are keys, there's nuggets, there's revelations, there's teachings in all of God's word, as the Bible says in, uh, in Timothy, that all of God's word is God breathed, all of it. And it's good for instruction and teaching and admonishing and convicting and building and edifying. And, you know, that's what God's word does. And all of it's God breathed and all of it is relevant in some way, shape or form. And this scripture is certainly relevant for revival. And there's another story I heard. I was trying to find it on my phone, but I know it's of the Lord. I know it's true that there was a revival that happened. I'm not sure if it was the Welsh revival. I'm not sure if it was the Azusa Street revival. Not quite sure what revival this exactly was. However, however, there's a story that touched my heart. I will never forget it, where there were there was a group of people, group of believers seeking God for revival hungry, seeking God, crying out. And there was one man that stood up and said, Lord, in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, you made a promise. And he, was, and he spoke out this word, and he, and, he, and he recited this word, and he spoke it out. And he said, Lord, we have been doing all these things that are listed here, humbling ourselves and praying, seeking God, Seeking God, turning from their sins. All these things that they said he did, they did, and revival broke out. Amen? So this is a, certainly a, a one scripture of many that is a key to revival. And revival broke out that day. And he said, we humbled ourselves, we prayed, we seeked your face, we turned from our wicked ways. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. So the first part of this passage that we're going to focus on today is turning from our wicked ways. And I'm not going in chronological order. I know humbling is first, prayer is first, seeking his face. We'll get all into that. But I think repentance is a big key. You know, John the Baptist said, I'll give you a, 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 a baptism to repentance. And that was before Jesus came. And in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen. John said, there's one that comes before me whose sandals I am not worthy to loose or to fasten. He will come and baptize you in fire and the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist is only baptizing in water for repentance. But I feel like it's, it's very critical for the body of Christ to understand that repentance is the first key to turn from our wicked ways. Amen. Turn from our wicked ways. Hallelujah. That's the first part. That's the groundwork. Now I'm going to go, you know, turn with me to chapter 2, verse 4. On the first verse, uh, chap passage that we'll focus on, on repentance. I've got a couple for that. And i got some more share, uh, stories to share. Um, so I'm starting at Romans chapter 2, verse 4. Or despise you the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance 
But after your hardness and an impotent, impotent heart, your hardness and impotent heart, treasure up to yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render, who will render to every man according to his deeds. So that's the first one, that the goodness of God leads to repentance. It is the mercy of God. It is the forbearance of God, as the word says. It is the patience of God that leads people to repentance. Um, you know, God is not slack. We're going to another verse where he says that. You know, God is not slacking one bit. Um, he is a God of justice. He is certainly a God of wrath. And God loves justice, as the Bible says. He is a just and righteous God. So repentance is necessary. And God will wait. He will wait. He will wait. He is long suffering, long suffering. So he'll suffer a long time. God suffers and he suffers a long time for all his creation. who He loves so much, loves so dear that want to have a hardened heart against them, a hardened heart against his will. Think they know better than God. And go against God's will and think they know better. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to a man, but it leads to death. It leads to death. A way that seems righteous and right to a man, a man made of dust. We're all made of dust and flesh. We don't know. We're not too more higher than the, than the animals. You know, evolution says we're made of monkeys and all these other things. And we come from some creatures and everything. So man even thinks lowly of themselves. Not that they're made in the image of God, a spiritual being, a mighty being, but that we come from little uh, ferret looking creatures and, and uh, you know, gopher looking animals that we evolved from, which... It's ridiculous and satanic, and that's not my opinion, that's facts. So we are made in the image of God, image bearers of God Almighty, and God is waiting patiently, waiting for us to turn, waiting for us to repent. That is the goodness of God, that God is so good. When we get a revelation of how good he is, how good God is, amen? His patience his long suffering is so good. Amen. When we fail, when we sin, when our conscience is ringing in our hearts, when our conscience is tearing at us, when we're so hurt, I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have did that. You know, I, I shouldn't have done this wickedness or harm this person. Or look what I've done here. Look what I've done there. I got this person crying. I had this person broken. I said the wrong thing here. You know, when, that, when that, that sting in our conscience, as God pretty much checking us, we have a sting there, a pain. You know, the Bible says the sting of death, right? That sin is a sting of death. It will sting you inside. And everyone knows they felt it, that in your conscience, in your conscience. But then you realize that with so many sins, so many violations, so many times our conscience has weighed us down. When we say, oh, I'm a failure, I made a mistake, I've done this, I've done that, you know, and God is still patient. We still wake up another day, the sun still shines on us, the rain still falls on us, he still provides us with water, amen? Let me get a sip. Amen. Praise God for the water. So we still get... You know, God does so much. You know, we, we, we enjoy family, friends, money, success, food and drink, parties and laughter and movies and amazing experiences that we, we all experience, uh, more or less. And, and God, you know, he gives all these things to us. He doesn't deny us these things. He doesn't say, oh, you sin today, therefore you don't get to eat today. God doesn't do that. His goodness endures his long suffering lasts and it, it endures the test that we put him through as we sin and we rebel and we break commandments of God and God still stays his hand. He still watches over us. He still protects us. He still helps us. And then when a revelation comes to you, how good God is, how many times my, I myself have violated the laws of God, broke his commandments, said wrong things, sinned against the Lord, 
disobeyed God and I still wake up another day. The sun still shines on me. I still have my family. I still have laughter. I still have food to eat, water to drink. You know, I still have life. I still have breath in my lungs. God has not taken me out from my sin. That's what we all justly deserve. Amen? We all justly deserve the wrath of God for our sin. We all must be held accountable. There's an accountability with God. People want to escape accountability today in all types of ways. We want to blame everything else for their, for their mistakes and shortcomings instead of looking inwardly at themselves. Amen. May we all look inwardly into ourselves and see the Bible is a mirror. It shows you who you are. That's why people don't want to read the word because it's going to show them who they are and they're going to get offended and then deny the word of God. This can't be right. This can't be true. I can't be a sinner. But no one on this earth can claim they're perfect. They would look insane. Amen. Who's perfect? But God is good. Amen. God is perfect. Amen. Okay, so now I'm going to turn to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Look at that again. The goodness of Lord leads us to repentance. Amen. Amen. And God doesn't want anyone to perish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> that blesses me. But that everyone should come to repentance. The goodness of the Lord leads us to repentance. His patience waiting for us to be broken and broke down and suffering in a bed of sickness and death, bro broken relationships, drama and cursings. God help us. God help us all, including myself. Because I won't stand there and act like i am got it all together. I don't. It's a beautiful mess, my life is. A beautiful mess. But God is so good. God is so good in it all. In my beautiful mess, he's making something beautiful. He gives us beauty for ashes. When we're broken and we're in ashes and everything's brought asunder and everything's in ashes around you, your whole life is in shambles, God can take it and make something beautiful. Amen? And he's the only one that can do it. No one else. Not your science, not the medical world, not man's knowledge. Not money, not fame, not popularity, nothing. When somebody's broken in the own ashes of their own sin, their own mistakes, the evils and sins of this world, when they're left there, imagine, I see it in my mind's eye, and my spirit, someone sitting, covered in ashes and dirt. I think about Palestine when I think about this. All the young people, all the children, bombed decimated, sitting in their ashes. Our life is like that. And they say cease fire, cease fire. And Israel saying we're not ceasing fire. We're going to keep going. That's how the devil is when he destroys your life. You say, oh, help. Oh, stop. Oh, make it stop. You're not talking to God. You're talking to the devil. He's not going to make it stop. He will keep bombing and bombing and bombing. Until there's nothing left. But God will give us beauty for ashes. When we repent, when we turn to God, when we realize how good he is when he's been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. But look, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And the wish that the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting to the coming day of the Lord or the coming day of God, wherein the heavens are being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, 
we according to his promise look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness. The new heaven and new earth will be righteousness. Righteousness. Right with God. There will be no unrighteousness. There will be no wickedness. There will be no enemies of God in heaven at all. Righteousness. And if you think this earth is wonderful, if you think that you think heaven is whoever went to heaven, people have went to heaven and came back. They didn't want to leave heaven. They didn't want to come back to earth. You can look up plenty of stories all over the Internet. People don't want to come back. They don't. They cry. They're upset. They, go, they get a taste of heaven. They get a taste of God's love. They don't want to come back to this wretched earth. I wouldn't either. Can't blame them. Coming back to these ashes of this earth, brokenness and death and sin. But, you know, there'll be a new earth far better than this one. New heaven far greater than the heaven there is now. God's going to make everything new. And he's going to use a fervent heat, fervent heat. That's intense. That's passionate. That heat when God dissolves and burns everything and makes everything new. Hallelujah. But righteousness has to be there. So God is so good. That he waits. He takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. None. The Bible actually says how precious is the death in the eyes of God of his saints. It's the death of his saints that is precious and blesses God, not the death of the wicked. Because the saints, when they die, they will be with God in righteousness. So as precious in God's eyes, God's like, come to me. Oh, come to me, my child. Oh, yes, hallelujah. However, the wicked, God does not at all in one bit take pleasure because he knows their destination is eternal fire, death, separation from God. It breaks God's heart. So God is good because he's waiting. He's waiting so patiently for us to turn. Hallelujah. Now, let me go back to Romans 2, because there's a part that I'm, I wanted to focus on here. Romans 2. Romans 2. I'll start back at 6. I want to go back here. I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to go back here. There's a part I missed and uh, share a couple stories on repentance in my own life. Um, okay, so Romans chapter 2, verse 6. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. Render to every man according to his deeds. Mm -mm -mm. There's accountability, ladies and gentlemen. There is accountability. There's accountability on the earth, isn't it? You know, a job renders you according to your deeds. You get paid. You get a paycheck according to your deeds. I'm in banking, basically in sales. They look at all my stuff. They look at all the sales force. They look at all the, call it sales force. They look at all my this incentives plan. They look at all my all my stuff. You know, five percent here, five percent here, twenty percent here. Wait, all that. They look at everything that I'm doing, and then I'm rendered according to my deeds. Right, a raise, a promotion. We get a bonus. If you don't do things according to, if you don't do what they ask for, if you don't follow the guidelines, specific guidelines that they ask for, you're held accountable, meaning you can get write-ups, you can get fired, you won't get your bonus, different things. So that's just in jobs, right? You're rendered according to your deeds at work. You're rendered according to your deeds with the laws of the land. Simple, you know, you do a crime, you do the time, right? You're rendered according to your deeds. It's accountability. People pay you back. You earn wages for what you do. You reap what you sow. People play evil for evil a lot. Oh, you done evil to me, I'm going to do evil to you. Look at Israel. You know, you killed 2,000 of ours, we're going to destroy and decimate the entire nation. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. According to the deeds of others, people are, are rendering back and paying back what was done to them. And we think that God, a holy God in heaven, who's just and righteous, do we really think for a second that he's not going to do the same at a much grander scale? He will render everyone according to their deeds. What you do, God holds account, and God will bring it back to account 
to hold everyone accountable. That's why we need the blood of Jesus, because Jesus suffered. Jesus died. Jesus was crucified, beaten, slain, marred like no man was never marred, defeated death, defeated sin, took all of our suffering on the cross, took all of our pain on the cross. He took it all, bled and died. And he was a man without sin. He was perfect, never sinned, never hurt anyone, walked in righteousness, listened to God all the time. And he suffered. Oh, how he suffered. They said he was a man of many sorrows. He was a man of many sorrows. Jesus was because he carried on the sorrows of, of, of us all. Amen. So the only way that we would not be held accountable by God for everything we say, everything we do, is if we hide in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Unless we trust in the blood of Jesus that washes us, it doesn't just cover us, it washes our sin, makes us white as snow, hallelujah, makes us so clean, the slate is clean with Jesus. That's why the world hates Jesus, doesn't want anybody to come to Jesus. It's always a problem when you say Jesus. It's not a problem for the Islam. Islam's okay. They're good with Islam. They'll defend Allah all day. Liberals, whoever, they'll defend Allah, they'll defend, Allah. They'll defend Muslims, they'll defend that. They'll defend Hindu, they'll defend Buddha, they'll defend New Age, you name it. Science, that's a religion too these days. They'll, they'll, they'll defend that. But as soon as you mention Jesus, all hell literally breaks loose on you. Try it on social media. Make a comment about Jesus and you'll be laughed at, mocked. And the Bible is always proven true. In the last days, there'll be mockers, there'll be scoffers. I see them all the time on the internet. Mockers and scoffers, hyenas is what they are, jackals and crackling hyenas. You try to glorify Jesus, and now you go, you get laugh emoji, laugh emoji. And I told one guy, I said, y'all are a bunch of hyenas. I'm a lion. I'm a lion being jumped and attacked by laughing hyenas. They didn't like that. It struck a chord. But I know it was true. Just laughing. You have no clear argument. So that's my point. I try to glorify Jesus, and I think it was in a comic book thing, a comic superhero page. Silly that I'm in there, um, but I'm in there glorifying Jesus because they started bringing up, you know, false gods and glorifying, uh, I won't even say his name, some monkey king and all that. So I said, no, Jesus can wash him. Jesus would dog walk him. And next thing you know, I get all types of... Uh, Attacks and laughing jackals come out the woodworks. Um, so, hallelujah. So, yeah, you can't bring up Jesus. It's always a problem. They want to suppress the truth with their wickedness, as the Bible says. So, let me, let me continue here. So, render to every man according to his deeds. Uh, verse 7. To them who, by patience and continuance and well-doing, seek for glory, hallelujah, and honor, praise God, immortality, thank you, Jesus, eternal life, woo, but to them that are, so, so look, look at that, he renders to those, right, to them who are, let's catch that, render to them according to their deeds, to them who be patient, continuous and well-doing, seek for glory, that's what they seek for, honor, immortality, eternal life. So, you see, God will render you according to your deeds, if you're seeking the Lord with patience, because you need patience in this world. Seeking for glory, honor, glory, the glory of God. You're seeking the glory of God. You're seeking for honor, to honor the Lord and honor those around you as well. Honor your family, honor your brothers and sisters, honor your coworkers, honor everyone. Show people honor. Um, you know, you got to show people honor just for being made in the image of God. Amen. They get honor just for that. You know, uh, immortality, we know that's eternal life immortality. Who wants immortality? You're only going to get it through Jesus. Amen. I want to be immortal, live forever. Amen. I will with Jesus. Praise God. Uh, but to them, so that's what happens with, you know, according to your deeds. So if you're seeking the Lord, seeking his glory, which I mentioned before, is only found through Jesus Christ. He is the only way to find any of this. We can't do it on our own, right? 
But to them that are contentious, contentious, or another way of saying it is selfishly partisan. Interesting. Selfishly partisan. Hmm. That's deep. Let that sink in. Contentious or selfishly partisan. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. But to not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. That's what comes to those who are selfishly partisan. Selfish is a strong word. It's a very strong word. Because most people that uh, don't want to see God are selfish. Amen. They only want to live for themselves. They think they're always right. They think they know the truth. As I said before, a, a, a way that seems right to a man, there's a way that seems right to a man that leads to death. That way is selfishness, pride, all about me. You know, you can tell in the world it's all about me, 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 me this, me that, I this, I that, I want, I this. They did this to me. They said that to me. It's selfishness and self-seeking, right? We have to come out of the me, and I'm speaking to myself too, amen, because I'm guilty. I'm not standing here like I'm not guilty, just so that's clear. We have to let go of the me, let go of the selfishness, the partisan, selfish partisan, which is parting, right? So you're parting, dividing yourself from God because you want to live for self. Jesus says, no, live for me, live for others, live vertical, live horizontal. So live connected with me and live connected with others. Amen. Selfishness is like, no, I'm not going to connect with God because I know better. God don't know what he's talking about. I know better. I'm a human. I know more than God. And then they go another way. Selfish partisanship. I'm parting and dividing from the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has politics. There's politics in the kingdom of God. There's an army in the kingdom of God. There's a king in the kingdom of God. Amen? There's a king. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. If you part from the ways of the kingdom, you're going into another kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, where it's celebrated where there's selfishness, vile ways, wickedness, the flesh, the me, me, me-ism. The devil is selfish. You know, let's go into that. Right. With the devil. What did he do? The most beautiful angel. The Bible says he had jewels all over his body. The Bible says he had instruments in his body. Can you imagine? He could just speak and it would be the most beautiful symphony that an ear never heard. He was so beautiful. Amazing was Lucifer. Right. But he got so into himself. He saw God, the most beautiful, most powerful, all powerful. You know, there's no one more beautiful than God. He saw God and he said, man, I want to be him. I want to be him. See what I'm saying? I, me. So Lucifer's like, it's me. It's I. I want to be God. I want to be like him. I want to put my throne there on the same level. He never said, and I can go back to the scriptures, but I'm just going to paraphrase it because, you know, for time. But he never said that he was going to be greater than God. He never said that he was going to overtake God. He said that he was going to be equal to God. I was going to put myself, my temple in the north where God is. He wanted to be God. And then God sensed it. Wait, somebody wants to be me. Somebody wants to be on my spot. Someone wants to be on my level. Someone wants to take my glory. Wickedness, iniquity was found in Lucifer. And with that seed of selfishness, that seed of me, me, I, I, which we see in humanity destroys lives, countless lives, this, all, this self-centeredness corrupted Lucifer to the point where he even deceived a third of the angels and turned them against God. And I believe it was music, in my opinion, because music hypnotizes people. Let's be honest. And Lucifer was the best musician. So it's obvious that he sang songs and ballads and, 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 and influenced a third of the angels and gave them this whole lie and this whole, this whole picture and this whole imaginative glory. Oh, you know, follow me and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to come on, come on. Such a deceiver. And he's still doing this today. 
deceiving millions and billions of people. Self-help, self, you know, self. Oh, build yourself. Do this for yourself. Oh, yourself. You don't need God. Trust in yourself. But last time I checked, when somebody gets cancer, they're running to the doctor. Last time I checked, somebody breaks a leg, they're running for a cast. You can't help yourself. Can you heal a bone yourself? Can you rebuke cancer yourself? Like if I say, oh, in the name of Joshua, I command this cancer to go. Are they going to listen? Is the disease going to go? No. But in the name of Jesus, diseases go all the time. All the time. Amen. So. Contentious. Being contentious, contending against God. You will. It, 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 but obey unrighteousness and, and they obey unrighteousness will lead to indignation and wrath. Indignation, which is a righteous indignation, a righteous anger and then wrath of God. The punishment that we all justly deserve outside of Jesus. And then look here, verse 9. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil of the Jew first. Interesting. And also of the Gentile. Tribulation and anguish. Another word for tribulation it says here is distress. Distress and anguish upon every soul of a man that does evil of the Jew first and of the Gentile. So ladies and gentlemen, we see clearly right here that not all Jews are saved. Right? Jew first. And what did it say is going to happen to the Jew first? Tribulation and anguish of their soul. Jesus condemned many Jews to hell when he was on this earth. So don't think for one second that every Jew is automatically going into heaven. The Bible says that we are Jews inwardly. Jew is a spiritual. Jew is inner. You become a Jew when you convert to Jesus Christ. I'm a Jew inwardly. God sees me more of a Jew than some of the Jews in Israel. Come on. When you're bombing 9,000, 10,000 children, someone's going to have to give an account for the blood in their hands. And they don't, if they don't repent, they're going to get tribulation and anguish, which it says right here, first for the Jew, then the Gentile. So the Jew gets it first. Right? But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of person with God. I repeat, there is no respect of person with God. Meaning he don't care who you are. He don't care what race you are. He don't care how good you talk, how pretty he made you, how beautiful, how many muscles, how popular. How good you are on social media with, with, with your filters and your this and your that and your false imagery you put on social media, which they all mostly do. They always want to go to highlight reels, but they don't want to put the camera on when they're going through their ashes, right? God's no respecter. So he's no respecter of a Jew either. If you were born from the seed of Abraham, what did God tell him? The, uh, the Pharisees said, oh, we know we're of the seed of Abraham. So what? I believe Jesus told them they were children of the devil. <laughs> Come on. I want to find that verse. G children of the devil. Jesus was calling some children of, of Abraham. So we have children of Abraham in Israel today. And if they're supporting massacring and slaughtering Palestinians, we have a problem. And I support Israel because I support God. But I also do not support slaughtering and not doing a ceasefire. So I'm just speaking on that. And God has led me here because as we see, says that God's no respecter of a person. So he could care less if, you are, if you're a seed of Abraham, if you're of the promise of Abraham. If you do wickedness, if you're evil, if you're contentious against God, you will pay. If, if you don't have the blood of Jesus Christ to wash you of your sin, there is no other way to heaven except through Jesus. That goes for Jew, Gentile, whatever the case may be, right? So, hallelujah. I'm, I'm going to finish up here. So that was the first key to revival is repentance, the turn from our wicked ways. God's not bringing no revival if people aren't repenting, turning from their sin, asking God to, to search me, God. Search my heart, like David said. 
search it and find any evil in me. Like God had to search Lucifer and found iniquity in him. God, search me. Is there iniquity? Is there a contentious, selfish bipartisanship against the kingdom of God, against the ways of the Lord, against the politics of heaven? Is that in me? Search me, God. And when God convicts you, when the Holy Spirit starts pointing out things in your mind, do you know it's a spirit? And don't ignore that voice, but listen to that voice and say, Lord, help me. You know, a repentance is also, it's a, it's a thought, it's a mindset. The ways of God, remember I said, uh, uh, the, a way seemed right for a man that leads to death. So it's a way of saying, hold on, the way of humanity, the way of this world, the way, the, 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 the God of this world is the way of the world. The way of my flesh will lead me to death, destruction, but the way of the Lord will lead me into righteousness, immortality, eternal life. Lord, I, your way is better. It's a mindset. Repentance is also a mindset. Even if you can't overcome your sins right away, right? We wrestle. We struggle with the flesh. We wrestle with the devil. It's not easy. You can't cut everything cold turkey, but God can help you. God can strengthen you as you just seek him every day and say, Lord, your ways are better. Lord, help me with my sin. Lord, help me overcome. Lord, your ways are better. No other way is better than the word of God. Read it. Test it for yourself. Test the word of God. Prove him. God said, prove me in my word. That's the one thing you can test God in. His word. He says it in here. Look it up. He, he said, test me on my word. Prove me on my word. Prove God on this. If you doubt it, then it's just a man-made book. If you don't think it's God breathed, try it and see if it works. Try it. And then that's repentance. God, your way is better. Your word is better. Let me get in your word. Let me turn from my sin. And I believe that is the foundation for the key of revival. And that's the first step. And we'll get to the other ones um, next time. Amen. And then uh, I'm going to share a quick story, right? Because it's one that God put in my heart. When I was in devil worship real deep, I had a, a pentagram on my wrist. I had uh, uncle, my uh, Egyptian uncle, my neck. I had pentagrams. I was going to get tattoos, demon tattoos. Uh, thank God I didn't. But I was really in deep in Miami, in deep with devil worship, talking to everybody, telling them, you know, preaching the gospel of Lucifer, Luciferian gospel, all this type of stuff. And then um, I went and uh, stayed with this guy named Tall, you know, straight, straight uh, certified gangster, no joke, uh, bodies upon bodies. Um, been in prison many times. He'd he been in prison so much, he showed me the scars on his ankles from the shackles of how many times he's been on the chain gang. Showed me pictures of him in prison. This guy was serious. Everybody was scared of him in the neighborhood. They, they called him Debo. And, uh, but I love him. He's a brother to me. I miss him. I wish I would see him. I hope he's okay. It would be good if he heard this. So me and Tal were staying up all night. We're drinking. We're drugging all night. We're chilling. My first night there, actually. And... Uh, so I was blown away. I'm like, man, this is, this is wild, man. I'm, I'm in Miami. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm in, this, I'm in the hood. I'm with this gangster. This is crazy. So, um, but then we got into the debate because we were debating throughout the night about Lucifer, the devil. and Because Tall was a Christian, even though he was a straight goon. He was a Christian. And uh, Tall was like, nah, man. You know, nah, man. It's not the devil. Nah, nah. It's God. It's God, man. You just got to stop tripping, bro. Stop tripping. But then, so then, there was a moment, like we were sitting, we were sitting, and I never forget how he looked. He was on the couch. It was kind of dark in the living room. It was late at night. We're sitting there. Like I said, we've been drinking, drugging. We're just talking. And then um, we start talking about this whole thing about the devil and stuff. And I, 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 I'm telling you, like I know, the Holy Spirit took him over because he started talking to me in a way that was different. It was like he switched. His, his face was different. His eyes were different. It was, I, even though I was high, I just noticed like, wait. Something's different right now. And he kept saying something like, in the words of like, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying or something like that. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying because what I'm saying is, it was almost like a, I know the voice of God. So it was, it was like the Holy Spirit was saying, I just hope you're listening, basically. But he said it in like a poetic way. I wish I could remember, but it was, it was a beautiful language. He was like, I just hope you're hearing what I'm, and he was looking straight at me. And he told me this. He said, okay, so you want to talk about the devil, right? He said, no, he said, no, you see this plate? He said, uh, if I make this plate, who am I to this plate? And this would, I mean, first of all, we're talking about all types of craziness. Now he's talking about a plate and getting real deep. I'm like, hold up. He was like, he's like, so who, he's like, who made this plate? No, he said, no, he said, if I'm the maker of this plate, then what does that make me to this plate? 
And then I, I think I was kind of like, uh, like the maker. The, he's like, no, God, you're the God of this plate because you made this plate. He said, now, if I break this plate, he didn't throw the plate. But he said, if I break it like that, then what does that make me? He said, that makes me the devil of this plate. And I'm telling you, it was simple analogy, but it, because it, I was trying to defend, like, oh, God's evil, and oh, you know, Lucifer, oh, he was set up, and this, and all, trying to find out all these things, and trying to make sense of it all. But he made it very simple. He said, the God of this plate, if I make this plate, I'm the maker of the plate. I'm the God of this plate. I made it. I formed it like God formed us. I love this plate. I have a use for this plate like he has a use for us. But if I go and break and shatter the plate and destroy the plate, I'm the devil. And I said, wow, because the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. And the next morning I got up, I threw away everything, threw away my unks, all, all that stuff. I repented to the Lord. I said, I'm done. Put everything in the trash. I had tarot cards, got rid of those. And then I'm telling you, when I was walking across the street, the Holy Spirit came down on me and he said, you can never sell your soul because I bought your soul with my blood. And when I heard that, almost mine as well should have been audibly. I'm getting chills now. I wept walking across the street. I never forget. It was a sunny day, Miami, walking to the laundromat. I had to wash my work shirt. Spirit of God, boom, you'll never sell your soul. Because you, your soul belongs to me. I bought it with my blood. And I heard it so strong. And I wept. And I went to the, I had to run into the bathroom because I didn't want the hood people to see me crying. Like, what was wrong with this dude? He was crying. So I had to, like, hurry up, got into the bathroom, and wept like a baby. Okay? So that's repentance. And I have so many other stories, but I'll, I'll leave it there. And we'll continue next week. All right, everyone, uh, let me close out in prayer real quick. Father God, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you, God, that you're so patient as you don't want any wicked person to perish. You have no pleasure in the death of any wicked man. You want everybody with you, God. That is your, that is your will. That is what you want. I pray, Father God, that everyone that heard this will be touched. Everyone that heard this will be cut to the heart. Everyone that heard this will be convicted. Everyone that heard this will seek you, God, and seek the truth for themselves. And may they find it and may they be changed. May they be resurrected. May they be revived. May they church be revived and may the church move in the full power of God through signs, wonders, and miracles. God, make it happen in these last days. We pray for Israel. We pray for Palestine. Be with those people there. And, and we pray for uh, still Ukraine. We don't forget. Pray for all the war-torn places, Father, around the world, God, and be with us. Give us hope, God. When In a place that seems so hopeless, in a time that seems so hopeless, give us hope, God. Give us freedom, God, where there's bondage in so many places. Give it to us, God. Give, it, give us what we need, Father, and give us a fresh anointing of your Holy Spirit so we can walk in power and we can walk in truth. Bless everyone that's watching. Bless everyone that hears this and touch them by the power of your Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen.